Thank you for uh, joining this webinar. Um, the focus is to show not just how you can turn AI into fuel for revenue growth, but how we're doing it within BoostUp. So this is a bit of a different twist than our previous webinar formats. We are gonna make this more product focused. We're gonna show you stuff in the technology. Hopefully it's of value. If you have questions at any time, please let us know. Uh, the people on this bridge, I'll go through the introductions really quick. We have Amit, who's our co-founder and current CTO. And then Chad, who's our uh, pre-sales leader. And so both of them are, are the most technology adept individuals in the organization. And they're going to be driving um, most of this narrative. Now, I'm going to go through maybe three slides in under two minutes. And then we'll get right into the demo. Please pepper us with questions. Uh, the whole intent here is how we're using AI and applying AI within the technology to drive results for customers and actually turning it into fuel rather than just treating us as, as a bolt onto a technology platform. And that's really the orientation. So for those that have joined, let me give you some context as we get started here. Our customers typically are dealing with this triad of visibility and accountability and results. And the way this works is there's generally some gap at the very top with visibility. You can't see well enough into your revenue machines. And if you can't see well enough into your revenue machines with, with clarity and with accuracy, you cannot hold people accountable. And if you can't hold people accountable, you cannot control performance. And so as a brand, you could say that our mission is to solve that problem by providing leaders and teams and reps with excellent visibility, accurate, trusted data insights so that they can hold themselves and their teams accountable so that they control revenue performance, a very simple formula. And the way that we do that is within what we call the Revenue Command Center. This Revenue Command Center is not just what we're probably most known for, which is forecasting, but it's essentially three pillars of a technology platform that includes forecasting, very deep and broad revenue analytics in our Revenue BI module, and very, um, very insightful deal inspection and coaching uh, capability. So across these three technology components, we're able to live, deliver visibility, accountability, and growth for our customers. Now, given that this is all about AI and our application for AI, I wanted to provide at least some orientation around how we use AI, and then we'll get started in the product. Um, the biggest thing I want to point out is that unlike most technologies in our category, and in most categories, this is true, most technologies are, are built on older architectures in which the AI is essentially bolted on afterwards. So most of the signaling that goes into the AI models is just pulled from CRM. When you look at activity matching, you think that there's a correlation between engagement, for example, at the rep level and deals and opportunities. But the way that that activity is matched within a system is often very broken. So what you see is you have all these signals presumably being plugged onto an opportunity, but it's actually not happening accurately. And as a result, the scores that go into AI modeling are generally inaccurate or less accurate than they should be. Whereas our architecture was built natively with AI. And this is a very, very important point that we'll emphasize as we go through the demo, but AI was built as a native component to the technology. It was not bolted on afterwards. So we're pulling insights, not just from CRM, but from all activity from the rep population and other third party signals, it's all brought into one pane of glass. And specifically the matching of data between systems is, is uh, you know, highly accurate. Essentially there's no gap between, between the, um, what you're seeing in one system with how that's matching up in data with another system. And that's critical when you actually look at the scoring that goes into your AI modeling. Those two have to be tightly aligned for that scoring to be actually accurate. So that's the setup. Why does it matter and how do we apply this within our technology? Amit, I'll let you uh, continue on this front. Sounds good, Adam. Um, can you just expand the whole slide? Let's have the yeah, absolutely. Here. Um, so what I'll do is I'll start with a summary of the key AI capabilities in Booster across our three core modules. We have a forecasting module, we have a deal inspection module, and we have a revenue BI module. So I'll go into the uh, at least one level of detail into the different AI capabilities in these three modules. And then we'll jump into a demo and we'll show you how, how all of these, these AI models, the AI capabilities actually are, are, you know, are brought to bear uh, in, the, in the product itself and how customers use these features. So let's start with forecasting, right? So Boostup's 
AI in the forecasting module is designed to help you call the right number early in the quarter. And there are a couple of different AI models that we we uh, we work on and that help help the uh, sales team get there. The first is our forecast projections model. We use historical data. We use pipeline conversion rates. We use stage conversion rates, historical stage conversion rates. We look at the different segments, different territories. Uh, we look at rep level conversions, conversions at, at various levels in the hierarchy. We look at new pipeline creation because the conversion rates from new pipeline which are built, uh, which is built during the quarter is very different from a pipeline which existed at the beginning of the quarter, right? So we have all these different attributes which we compute based on historical data. And based on these attributes, we come up with a number uh, that gives a projection of where the sales team will end up at by the end of the quarter. And we actually explain how we got to that number. So the sales team can can use that projection to figure out if, if they are on track, if they are falling behind and, and where they are falling behind. That's more of a top-down model. The second model is our deal outcome model where we are going deal by deal and we look at various signals on the deal, the signals from the CRM, things like your, your stage and, and has the stage changed recently? Has it gone back? Has it moved forward? Um, email data and what kinds of emails were actually matched to this deal or data from calendar and call and all the other third-party data sets. Right? We use all of these different signals to come up with a prediction for each deal, uh, whether the deal will actually get closed one by the end of the quarter or will the deal slip or, or get lost. And again, this prediction can then be used by, by the sales teams to figure out if, if they are on track for the quarter. And finally is our AI-assisted forecasting where the workflow that we give to sales reps and managers to, to come up with a, uh, with, a, with a call for the quarter can be augmented with both of these models. So we, we tell, sales managers and, and, and sales reps, whether the deals they have included in, in the call for the quarter actually are, are on track. Is the deal outcome a slip or is it a win? And and how and, and why is there a gap if there is a gap between what they are calling and what boost of things they'll be at. So that's the core, those are the core core features on the AI side, core capabilities on the AI side of the forecasting module. Uh, net, next, let's look at our deal inspection and, and deal coaching module. This is a pretty core feature in Boostup. And what we're doing here is we will look at the different data uh, being matched at the account level and the opportunity level. And we come up with an engagement risk score. We are computing a risk at the account level and at the opportunity level um, based on the different kinds of engagement happening on the deal. And we'll show a demo of how this actually works in practice. But this is a pretty powerful feature. It lets sales managers and sales reps understand at a quick glance, the risk on every deal and they can then drill into this deal and they can understand where the risk is actually coming from. Have there been recent meetings? Have there been recent emails with, with say, negative sentiment? Or has there been strong positive sentiment on the deal? And all of these uh, you know, features can then be used uh, by, by the managers to actually coach reps and help them progress deals faster. Um, all of this is made possible because we have very accurate activity magic. Uh, we have an AI module that looks at, again, different activities and can figure out the right accounts and right opportunities to match the activity onto based on, again, various features, uh, which are from come, which come from the CRM, things like the contacts linked to the account or the opportunity, um, the the email email data itself, right? What products are being discussed? Um, and all of that, all of those signals go into figuring out the right way to match activity onto the right accounts and opportunities. And finally, we have a pretty interesting feature on the roadmap, um, which is our co-pilot, uh, revenue co-pilot. We call it BoostBot. And through this uh, this, uh, this BoostBot, through this co-pilot, you can actually query the data in BoostUp through Slack. You can ask uh, for things like, show me, list the deals which are at risk. You can ask um, the, the co-pilot to actually summarize deals for you. And, and you can then basically take BoostUp with you uh, in you know, uh, and and access the data in Bootstrap through Slack, natively. Uh, and then coming to the last module, which is the Revenue BI module, um, the AI capabilities here are, are of a varied nature, right? We have uh, we automatically uh, store history across all your accounts and opportunities and various other custom objects in Salesforce, and that lets us compute change summaries, uh, summary change on the pipeline side and the forecast side. And that gives a very quick view into what has changed week over week or month over month. And that lets uh, sales teams again, figure out if, if things are on track or they're slipping and so on. 
And then we have, since we're tracking all the historical data, we can actually come up with uh, the, the right targets to set, uh, both on the pipeline coverage side, as well as on the activity side. Uh, instead of sales ops teams having to set uh, static targets uh, on pipeline coverage for, for all their reps and managers, Boostup can actually inform them as to the right coverage targets. Uh, maybe in, in, in North America, the coverage should be 3x. Maybe in APAC, it needs to be 5x, right? So things like this, these, these differences can be automatically computed in Boostup and we can help sales ops team set the right targets, uh, both on the pipeline side as well as on the activity side. So those are the key AI features, AI capabilities at a, at a very quick glance. And now we can dive into a deeper demo. And feel free to ask questions, any questions, and we are happy to dive into uh, the details here. Perfect. Thank you for the setup. All right, we're going to shift over to uh, Chad. For the next 10 minutes, we'll show you how all this fits into a typical storyline. Please raise your hand with questions. We'll try to field those throughout. And if we don't get to it, we'll reserve the remaining five minutes um, to, to Q&A. So Chad, I'm going to stop and turn it over to you. Awesome. Um, sounds good. And, you know, a lot of AI and really AI is embedded in every piece of what we do here at BoostUp. And it has been from the beginning. This is not a bolt on. This is something that we focused on from the inception of the company. And it's really allowed us to do some very, very interesting things. So what we'll do is I'll walk you through some of the places where we leverage AI either for, you know, change summaries and alerting or those forecast, uh, you know, forecast projections say, hey, where, where am I going to land and why, as well as getting into the deal intelligence. And then, of course, some of the business intelligence side of things that we can look at. It. Um, but let, let's start with a, a pretty simple scenario. We know CROs and revenue leaders are pulled all over the place. So, you know, first things first, we want to leverage AI to inform them when things are happening. So what I'll do is pull up my screen here and you're going to see I'm actually not in boost up. I'm, I'm in my Slack. And here in Slack, what I've gotten is some quick change summary of, hey, what's going on in my pipeline, as well as what's going on in my forecast. So how has my forecast changed those actual submissions my people are putting in there? And what it allows me to do is understand what's moved, what's pushed in, what's pushed out. And with a single click, I can actually get directly into the, in the uh, platform to better understand what's happening here. And this is kind of the first piece of AI that we're going to cover that's embedded in the tool and part of the day-to-day -day workflow of most of our customers. What we see here is our unified forecasting view where I can have really whatever data I would like in here. This is a completely user configurable screen, so you can put whatever you want in this, but it allows me to see my people uh, as deep down that hierarchy as I would like to, as well as you know whatever data feeds I may want here, whether it be targets or, or forecast calls. But I'm going to call your attention to a few forecast models that I'm running in this view. I have my bottoms up forecast model, which are essentially just user submissions. I have a weighted forecast or some mathematical forecast that my ops team in this case likes to put in here to say, hey, are we trending in a linear fashion? And of course, the big AI piece is right here, boost ups. Uh, AI is giving you a forecast projection or essentially where do we think you are going to land at the end of the quarter based on the data we ingest. And as Amit explained, there's a lot of data that goes in here. We're looking at a lot of historical performance from the top down as well as from the bottom up, even getting as granular as looking at the deals and those individual AI projections that we have on those deals. So there's a lot of data and a lot of features here. The other piece of interesting uh, information here is it's not just a number. We give you an explainer, right? So in the case of Kayla here, we expect her to hit 9.7 million. And that's based on what she's booked so far. What we expect her to book in a few different forecast categories here between today and the end of the quarter, it is time bound. These numbers will change day to day as time slips away from you, as well as what we expect her to create and close or pull forward that doesn't necessarily exist in that pipeline today. This is actually a fairly unique thing for us in the market. A lot of people are going to put out some type of AI projection of, hey, here's where we think you're going to land. Not a lot of people explain it and not a lot of people go into the level of depth we go to. Another thing that's interesting with this, if you see these conversion rates on these different uh, you know, forecast categories or these different subsets of the pipeline that we have here, these are not a one size fits all thing. Um, again, something that's fairly unique to us and allows us to be as accurate as we are is we are running 
this unique projection at every level of the hierarchy for every user. So you're actually getting a unique behavior and data-based projection for every single user in your hierarchy to give you a good idea of where they're going to land. So you can leverage that as a way to triangulate and call the number that you want to roll up to your board, roll up to your boss, whatever the case may be. Uh, our goal with all of these is to be plus or minus 5%. Typically, we hit that, when, correct me if I'm wrong here, Amit, but right around week four and a quarter is where we're seeing that, which is pretty impressive. It would be less impressive, Amit, if we did it on day 89 of a quarter, but four weeks in is pretty good. <clears throat> so that's the first piece. That's the first piece of, of AI here. But as I mentioned, it's not just this piece of AI that we're looking at in Boost Up. There are other AI models that actually power parts of this as well. So I'm going to jump down to the deal level and we'll take a look at a couple things here. So what I've got here is a big long list of opportunities. This is actually a very commonly used view for sales leaders, maybe line level, second level leaders, as well as you know your, your end users to come in, inspect their deals, even update in line and get that um, those opportunities uh, manage the way they should. But you'll notice we've got two columns here where AI is playing a big role. One is our prediction or, hey, what's going to happen with this deal? Are you going to win the deal? Are you going to lose the deal? Or is the deal going to slip into a future forecast period? Obviously, that is based on what's happening in the deal in context of the close date, which is actually pretty unique again to us. Um, dirty little secret it's not just a single projection happening here. We actually have multiple project projections running underneath. This actually helps you get context on the deals that maybe they have a potential to slip. How much potential is there? Is this a deal we should save or should we just push the close date out now to save ourselves some headache? We want you to have that context so you can take the right actions. Now, another thing that's helping drive this is what happening in the deal or the overall health of the deal. And that's this engagement risk score. And this one's actually fairly unique. So not only is it an AI projection, but this is once again, an AI projection powered by more AI. And that comes down to our activity mapping. So what we're looking at here is not just like most of our competitors, the change data that's happening in CRM and how is it moving or not moving? Is it in stage too long? So on and so forth but we're actually looking at the back and forth between buyer and seller. What is that behavior looking like? And how does that behavior compare to the historical behavior of deals we've won and lost for that particular deal cohort? We know all deals are not created equal. A seven figure deal is gonna work a lot different than a five figure deal. That is actually a piece of the model and the way we look at, at, at the business here. But what we do with this is we tell you where we see risk and we tell you once again why we see risk. What are those behaviors, good or bad, typical or atypical that we're seeing happening there? And it could be, you know, CRM metadata or kind of uh, hygiene based, um, or it could be behavioral based. For instance, we have had negative sentiment come up. We've got a key role not engaged. And we do give you the ability to drill deeper to really get the, you know, your hands on the context of what's happening here. This is where another piece of AI really comes in, and it all comes down to the activities that are showing up and being related to these accounts and opportunities. Now, the way we do this, again, leverage is AI, where we are plugged direct to the source, into your calendars, into your emails, and we're searching those uh, communications for content and context to get them into the appropriate place. It's not just a simple, hey, here's a contact. Uh, here's an email, let's marry them together. We know that not everyone logs all of their contacts and we know that you know it, it's a big gap for a lot of other players in the market. We're actually using AI and intelligence to look through the emails, read through them and make sure they're married to the appropriate opportunity and the appropriate account. This is huge, especially if you're working large accounts with multiple opportunities or if you have a large partner org, we're able to kind of mine those and map them appropriately. On top of that, what we're doing is going through those and understanding what the language is there, seeing sentiment, positive, negative. We can see keywords and phrases being mentioned, and we're leveraging that all to give you an idea of where the risk is. The AI doesn't stop there, though. What we also do is because we're going direct to the source, 
we're able to find net new contacts that you guys are reaching out to and engaging with, but may not exist in your CRM. We're also going to highlight whether you know they exist in CRM already or not, as well as tell you who on your side is actually engaging with that, that customer in context of the opportunity. This is really big. You can get a really clear picture on who you're engaged with and who you're not. It also allows us to put some interesting features in here that I'll show you in a moment that really give you an idea of what are the behaviors that are driving risk in your pipeline, as well as um, what are the things you're doing well or the, the behaviors you want to encourage. <clears throat> now, Amit, I know this is something that is your baby and something you've worked very hard on over the last several years. Um, question for you, Amit, what, when talking about the AI and the activity mapping here, what is the most, I guess, for you as the brains behind the operation, the most exciting thing about the way we do this compared to really everyone else in the market? Um, on the activity matching side, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So the key, the key thing is, I mean, if you look at the out outcome here, when, when we, um, the most interesting thing, you know, the way the system works is when you connect to the customer's instance uh, without any upfront configuration, the accuracy of activity matching actually is more than 95% when, when the, the new customer connects to, um, to, to boost up, right? And further, if you want to further customize it, then there are knobs in the system that let you actually tune those AI matching algorithms. You can you can customize the activity matching based on, say, specific custom attributes that the, the customer might have in their sales force or maybe some other features that they want to use to improve the accuracy of activity matching. So those those kinds of knobs, those those controls to further tune the models is what is what is very interesting here. So the system starts with a with a certain level of you know very high accuracy by looking at various attributes at the deal level, at the uh, at the account level, and the contact level. Uh, it understands email threading. It understands um, context from the emails. It looks at the keywords being mentioned in the email. It looks at various other um, attributes across. If you have multiple accounts and multiple opportunities, which are which are um, which are likely candidates for matching, it looks at all of those those uh, those opportunities and decides uh, based on these different signals the right right opportunities to match the activity onto. But again, that can be further controlled by the customer themselves directly through uh, um, through our through our um, configuration framework. One other awesome. question I want to throw in there, guys, real quick. Sure. This is from Ryan. It's about the Slack reporting that we can do. Can it be scheduled to be sent to all users dependent on hierarchy as well? Yes, yes. So the Slack um, notifications are actually contextual. Uh, when the user adds the bot to their, to their um, Slack, uh, based on the user's uh, role, based on the user's uh, position in the hierarchy, the right notifications are sent to the user. Uh, they will receive their own forecast summaries, their own pipeline summaries. They will look at they look at their own deals. Right, it's all in the context of that user. Perfect. All right, back to you, Chad. We've got a few more minutes before we open it up for additional questions. So I'll I'll let you take it over. Awesome. So we've covered some some pretty cool stuff and and kind of those kind of projections from the forecast to the deal level to, you know, how we're actually leveraging AI to assemble the data to make sure we're accurate and giving you a clear objective view of what's happening in your deals and your, and your forecast. One of the other things that is really interesting is again, how we're leveraging AI, not just at kind of that line level, but how do we take this a little bit higher and make it more usable at a leadership level? And you know, it starts, in my opinion, with aggregating that risk score data. For instance, we could take a look at those deals and those risk scores across our pipeline, letting you know where you should focus your time. Of course, not picking too much into these deals that are being managed really, really well by your people. Of course, check your big ones. Uh, being able to clean up these, these deals that maybe have gone sideways or pushing out deals that aren't quite baked yet, but being able to kind of dig into those deals on the bubble and solve the problems that are specific to that deal. Again, helping you focus your time and making sure you're getting the maximal return on that effort you're putting in with your team. We'll also give you some good ideas of where you should coach because those, 
different factors that drive risk in deals tend to you know, be consistent across different segments of your organization. And if you can figure out what those are, or if we can tell you what those are, we can give you a great way to coach your team or know what you can work on to make sure that you're executing properly. And again, this is all AI fueled. We're just displaying the data now. So you know what to do and what actions you should take. These are all canned reports, but it doesn't quite stop there, which is great. We can also leverage this same type of AI to do quite a bit. Like Amit said, not just, you know, display data from a deal level, but give you an idea of how you potentially trend uh, over time, how you can look at what do I typically maybe create and then close a quarter later? What do I typically create and close in quarter? By analyzing and doing a lot of things uh, with that historical data, we can tell you kind of where you pace and really show you a true gap rather than just, hey, you're at 18% pipe coverage now two quarters out. We also leverage that AI or can leverage it to kind of set different targets for different things. In this case, I've got a pipeline coverage target and an ARR target. We can see how we typically trend in quarter and out quarter to those targets. And if those things are the right things, we can do this not just with your ARR or pipeline targets, but as Amit mentioned, email targets or net new contact targets, whatever the case may be. We have a lot of flexibility to kind of give you the data you need to make the decisions you want. And on top of that, we give you the ability to display it really anywhere in the product you would like and explore that data. Uh, one other good example of AI, and this is something that I use quite a bit. This is something where we can look at your pipeline and help you understand conversion rates a much, much easier way. This is something where we've actually built some intelligence and some AI in here to help us do the data repair because we all know deals uh, opportunities are non-linear in fashion. Um, they skip stages, they go forward and backward, there's a lot going on there. But the intelligence we've built into Boost Up gives us the uh, ability to kind of repair that data so you can understand how things move through your pipeline, what your conversion rates are at every stage, where things typically drop off, but not just for your whole pipeline. You can actually slice and dice this data, look at, look at it by segment, look at it by user, look at it by region, whatever the case may be here. The example I have is my sales generated opportunities versus my marketing generated opportunities. This must be Aaron's because we only got about a 12% clip rate once we get a once we get an opportunity started here, but my sales team is absolutely crushing it. We can see that on top of that, as I dig into the data, we can see that our sales opportunities are moving quite a bit faster than our, our marketing opportunities. So if I am at a, uh, you know, a little behind and I need to make up some pipeline, maybe it's fifth time to my sellers on top of maybe kicking Aaron in the butt a little bit to see if I can't get some better deals coming across. But these are a few of the pieces here. There's a lot more, and I would love to speak to you all about um, diving a little bit deeper on how we leverage AI in the product and all of the fun things we can do with it, but we are running out of time. So Aaron, I've kind of covered some things. I know we've got some questions and, and thank you all for joining. Uh, let's get into some of those, those questions that we can maybe answer for you. So we've been answering them live. I, uh, I don't have any new ones. Thank you Amit, for hopping in there. Um, for those that remain, anything else that you are wondering about that we can answer? Um, that's the first question. Second question is, is this helpful? We want to know if we should continue doing these little sessions to uh, showcase the product in different ways for different people. If it is helpful, obviously, we want to continue that, but I, uh, I'd love to get your feedback. So um, hop on right now. Uh, join the chat bridge. If you do have any questions, I'm not seeing anything come through. So I'm assuming we've done at least a reasonably good job of showcasing the, the nuts and bolts of the technology. Well, following this, what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, uh, clean up the recording and send it out to all of you and everyone else that registered for, for this event. We'll probably do additional product-led sessions in the future. If there's anything specific you want to see, um, you can ping me, or if you have, want to have a conversation with our team, you can uh, you can look up uh, chat online and message him. We'll be more than happy to, to grab a conversation with you. All right. Thank you, everyone. Oh, wait. Oh, oh there we go. Absolutely. All right. We'll see you guys. Um, uh, looks like we had one question come in here. How long does it take to integrate into this sales process? Oh, there we go. Uh, 
Uh, so actually our typical implementation um, from, you know, you know, welcome call to, to go live, it, it's four to six weeks. We are the fastest in the, uh, really, really since the fastest on the market to be able to kind of get things going, you know, some of our AI can be up and running in as little as three days. Things like our activity matching actually run out of the box. So there's no time there. Our deal scores populate, like I said, within about three days or less. Um, and depending on data, you know, within that, you know, one to two quarters, somewhere between, like I said, maybe a little less, depending on, on deal volume and things like that, we can actually get things plugged in and giving you projections. So very, very fast to implement and very, very fast to be performant models on top of that. Amit, I don't know if you have anything you want to add to that. Yeah, I mean, th that covers it. So um, the the activity matching, the engagement risks, they basically uh, are up and running as soon as we get connected to, to your Salesforce instance, your email and calendar instance, and we start pulling that data. Projections, uh, typically, if you have history in Salesforce, then the projection models can also be up and running very, very quickly. We can just ingest all the history from your Salesforce and we can get the uh, historical data uh, plugged into our models right away. If Boostup has to start collecting history, it takes about a quarter for us to build that history. And then the models become a lot more accurate from the second quarter. Good question. All right. I think we ran a tight little show today, guys. So thank you for joining everyone. And I'll remember not to prematurely sign off next time. <laughs> Thanks for the question mark. All right. Well, we'll see everyone later.